Communication with air traffic control is one of the basics of the IFR structure, but communications, just like any other system, are prone to failure. What do we do if we lose contact with ATC on an IFR flight? Let's look at an example flight we're planning between Morgantown, West Virginia and Hagerstown, Maryland. Our flight plan has us departing Morgantown Airport, proceeding to our first fix, O-Town, then going direct to the Indian Head VOR, where we'll join Victor 268 to the Hagerstown VOR and on to our destination. Lost communications planning starts from the moment we get our clearance, even if it's not obvious from what ATC tells us. We'll pull out our scratch pad and get ready to copy the familiar craft clearance. We're going to be cleared to Hagerstown Airport via O-Town, Indian Head, Victor 268, Hagerstown. We're told to maintain 5,000, expect 7,000, one zero minutes after departure. Our departure frequency is 121.15 and our squawk is 3217. So how does this information tell us what to do if we lose comms? It turns out that we have everything we need to continue a flight if the worst case happens and we lose radio contact right after departure. So let's start our takeoff and see how it works. Notice the time of our departure, 26 minutes after the hour. After we clear the field, we engage the autopilot, tower hands us off to departure, we'll switch over to 121.15, but lo and behold, this is where our radio dies. We'll quote unquote fail our radio here by just switching off COM1 on the audio panel. We could troubleshoot this in a bunch of different ways, but for now, let's just assume there's no way this radio is coming back and we're entering IMC. The first thing to do is fly the airplane. We've already programmed the autopilot to fly to the first fix, O-Town, and climb to 5,000 feet. This was the altitude we were assigned in our IFR clearance. Now that we've got aviate and navigate out of the way, what can we do about communicate? Obviously the radio is out, but that doesn't mean the transponder might not still be working. We want to squawk 7600. 7600 alerts ATC of a comms problem. They'll expect you to follow lost comms procedures. If they can't issue you instructions, at least they know what to expect from you. So what does ATC expect from us? In our clearance, we were given two altitudes. One was the assignment of 5,000 feet, which we're currently climbing to. The other was 7,000 feet, the altitude we were told to expect 10 minutes after departing. When ATC tells you to expect something, they're not just saying that to get you excited about what's next. It's specifically for if you lose communications under IFR. If I tell my daughter she can expect some ice cream, if she doesn't hear from me soon, she's probably going to go grab the ice cream out of the freezer herself. It's the same with IFR pilots who don't hear from ATC. They'll do what they were expected to do. In our case, it's to climb to 7,000 feet 10 minutes after departure. So we'll fly at 5,000 feet, and then 10 minutes after our departure time, which was 26 minutes after the hour, we'll climb to 7,000 feet. Meanwhile, we want to think about our options. We're in IMC right now, but if we were VFR, we could break off our expected flight plan, stay in VFR conditions, and find an airport we could land at visually. If it has a control tower, we would expect the light gun signals. This is the other thing the 7600 lost comms code will get for us. That's our best case, find VFR conditions. You should always know where the nearest VFR is and if you have enough fuel to get there. But we don't have VFR conditions. Let's recap our lost communications procedure so far. We departed, climbing initially to our assigned altitude of 5,000 feet along our filed route of flight. We didn't need a radar vector, but if we had gotten one prior to our comms failure, we would have flown that and proceeded directly to the fix or airway we were being vectored to. We stay at 5,000 until 10 minutes after departure, then climb to our expected altitude of 7,000 feet. This brings us a few miles from the Indian Head VOR. This is where we're going to pick up Victor 268. Let's look at the minimum altitudes for this segment of the airway. We're in our Cirrus, so we're okay to use the GPS MEA of 4,700 feet. We're currently at our expected altitude of 7,000 feet, so we'll stay at that since it's the higher of the two. But let's say we were just using VOR to navigate this airway. We'd need to observe the higher MEA of 12,000 feet, and once joining the airway, climb to that altitude. The point here is that when there are more than one possible altitude, like an expected altitude and an MEA, we always take the highest one in lost comms. Incidentally, this is the lowest ATC would have us fly this part of the route anyways if we were still in radio contact. 
Now, hopefully we regain contact with ATC or find VFR conditions. But if we don't, how does this whole thing end? Again, let's look to our clearance. The C in craft is our clearance limit. 99% of the time, this is our destination airport, which is the case here. So can we just pull up an approach and land? Sort of. The regs tell us in 91.185 to proceed to our clearance limit and then proceed to a fix from where we can begin an instrument approach to land, timing it so that we arrive as close as possible to our ETA in our flight plan. Now, let's get a little realistic. If we arrive at Hagerstown a little on the early side before our ETA, no one at air traffic control is looking at a clock making sure you're delaying your approach until the right time. ATC doesn't want you circling an IMC above the airport any more than you want to. You can exercise your judgment and, if necessary, your emergency authority to commence an approach upon arrival. Worried about CYA? Switch your squawk to 7700 for an emergency and do the paperwork once you're safely on the ground. So let's pull up the ILS for runway 9 approach. The localizer is almost lined up with our course, so if the conditions permit, which is a big if, remember without comms we may have no way of getting weather information, we'll plan this approach. What about altitudes? We're at the MEA for this airway, and we should stay at that altitude until we can use the minimum safe altitude for this approach. It's 4,000 feet within 25 miles of the Martinsburg VOR, so we'll go no lower than that until established on the approach. We'll head to the initial approach fix, Kovac, and fly the ILS down to land. Once we're on the ground, we'll definitely want to get in touch with the tower by phone or other means to get on the same page about the whole incident. Now, let's go back a bit and say that we were actually able to regain communications while we were still en route to Hagerstown. Approach tells us at some point to expect the ILS runway 9. Again, that word expect. It means we haven't been instructed to do anything different yet, but in the event of a lost comms at this point, this is the approach we should execute, just as we did in the prior example. Now, instead of losing comms, ATC tells us next to proceed direct COVID, the initial approach fix, and then says to get ready to copy holding instructions. They tell us to hold west of the Kovic intersection as published, expect further clearance at 1630 Zulu, time now 1620 Zulu. Notice the magic word expect again. It's another lost comms item. The time is now 1620 Zulu. We'll hold this published and wait for further clearance. If we lost comms here, we'd need to stay in the hold until 1630 Zulu. This is the time we were told to expect further clearance. Sometimes this is abbreviated EFC. Our EFC time is 1630 Zulu. And at that time, we can start our approach on the ILS. This is a rundown of the lost communication rules laid out in FAR 91.185. The thing to understand about lost comms and IMC is that it's not anybody's best case scenario. The regs are designed so that when ATC can't communicate with you, you at least stay predictable, allowing them to accommodate traffic around you. Did you like this video? You're gonna love Flight Insight IFR Ground School. Hours and hours of videos just like this, as well as hundreds of practice test questions based on the real thing with instructor feedback. Head on over to flight-insight.com IFR right now.